Welcome back to Journeyman, the show where we scour the footballing universe for the most interesting stories from the most fascinating clubs. Now you may have noticed today that James Wayne isn't here, he's in bed with the flu, but also that we're in the beautiful countryside. That's because we're going to Forest Green Rovers, the world's greenest football club. Let's go. So obviously, lovely being in the countryside. You've got the fresh air, you've got the lovely surroundings, but lots and lots of cow sh <coughs> Remember to look out for that stuff when you're walking through the country because you know, it could, you know, could end up where you don't want it. So who are Forest Green Rovers? Founded all the way back in 1889, the Gloucestershire Club have been a very humble entity for much of their history. Located in the small town of Nailsworth and known to many as the Little Club on the Hill, they never got anywhere near the Football League until the last 20 years. In fact, their biggest honour was an FA Vars triumph in 1982. We go back probably 25, 26 years, they kind of rose to the pyramid of the non-league very quickly, the last three leagues. And then everybody said, virtually every year in the conference, oh, Forest Green will go down. Mm. Um, and we thought we'd reached our limit. Yeah. Um, little village, 6,000 people to, um, to get that far. But we survived for 18, 19 years and almost relegated a couple of times. Um, but the final few years was a struggle. Having flirted with relegation twice in the space of a few years, FGR were on the verge of extinction. But in 2010, renewable energy entrepreneur Dale Vince saved Forest Green Rovers and started a sustainable revolution at the club. So the club was in trouble in the summer of 2010 and um, we lent it some money uh, the, for cash flow to get through the summer. And initially he thought it was probably 100,000 or so to help us out in the short term. Come the end of the summer they said actually it's worse than that and you need to take over and then if not the club is going to fold and, and I said oh, you know, I don't want to do that, I'm, I'm you know, too busy to, to do that. But, uh, we thought about it, the club is 125 years old, big part of its community, you know, and it's our backyard, so we, t we said, all right, we'll take responsibility. It really was a struggling club. <clears throat> Unless he'd moved in, uh, we'd have done a barrier of Bolton and, and disappeared, probably. So what happened next? Within two years of taking over, Dale Vince changed the club colours from black and white to black and green, and over the last decade, this has been coupled with a transformation off the field. Forest Green Rovers now run entirely on renewable energy, have a totally organic pitch, house their own charging points for electric cars, don't sell meat or dairy at their stadium, and are recognised by the UN as the world's first carbon neutral football club. We've created this green football club, this thing that's really quite improbable in many people's minds. We're working with the United Nations on a global programme to replicate the work we've done here in, in sports of all kinds. And, and that's about harnessing the, uh, the power of sports fans all over the world in the fight against climate change. I think what we're doing here is, is you know, fantastic. I really, uh, I really believe in it. I like where he stands on uh, his environmental policies with the solar panels, with the pitch. I think it's quite good, really. And I think it sets a good precedent for other clubs who might want to do something similar. You know, he's a, he's a strong character. You know, and um, you know he, he's also been on the national stage in relation to climate change as well, and policies that are needed to address it. Um, so, you know, I think that for me, that's that's a very positive thing. And in 2017, FGR became officially recognised as the world's first vegan football club. Now, before any of you angry meat eaters start bashing away on your keyboards, just hear them out. Pretty good. When we went vegetarian and then vegan, some of the supporters didn't like it um, because traditionally football supporters like their, their burgers and their sausage rolls and whatever. Um, but when the quality was sampled, most people have come on side and a lot of people really do enjoy the vegan food there. I'm vegan when I travel with the club normally, yeah. um, as the players are. Um, but no, I, I do eat meat occasionally, mainly white meat. Um, but I love vegan food, yeah, especially yeah. that cooked by, by the chef Jade up at Forest Green, it's, it's excellent. And we find that with, uh, with a lot of away supporters and certainly visiting directors, um, they're very praiseworthy about the food that's served up. I was a vegetarian ever since I started supporting Forest Green really. Yeah. Um, turned vegan a couple of years ago, which wasn't really much to do with the club, but it did help. 
But why should we swap our hot dogs and burgers for something more green when we go to the football? 50% of the UK's land is taken up with grassland for grazing and we import 40% of our food. So uh, just on the basis of, uh, you know, of our ability as a country to feed ourselves, you know, it's incredibly inefficient turning plants into animals to eat them. And it doesn't matter, you hear all this stuff about, oh, we can do it in nice, uh, we can have nice farms where all the, the animals are happy and, uh, and so on. But it, you can't beat the maths. You know, the maths are, <laughs> it's much more efficient to grow your protein as plants and eat those than it is to go via an animal. You just can't beat that. So I think if you have meat five days a week, how about think about having it two days a week or one day a week, you know. I'd say try the food because, you know, lots of our fans have tried it and they've gone vegetarian and vegan themselves at home. Our players have done the same. You know, there's a, a lot of preconceptions about veganism and plant-based living. I would say to anybody, try it because you don't really know until you do. This makes Forest Green Rovers unique and has brought them attention from all over the world. Our audience has grown about fourfold in the last nine years, you know, the, the match audience. You see our shirts on the streets, you see kids wearing them and adults wearing them. Uh, so it goes way beyond the community of Stroud, I would say, and our community actually is, is the community of, of environmentalists and people who care about what's going on and want to change that. You know, we've got fan clubs in 20 different countries of the world, people that are our community that have seen what we're doing and, the, you know, backed us. We had a contingent from Germany came up to um, the Salford match a few weeks ago and the French contingent came last week. To, I mean, it's, it's quite amazing, really. But this new direction hasn't gone down well with everybody. We've attracted a lot of fans uh, just through the vegan thing and the environmental like ethos of the club, which is good in a sense, but on the other sense, it doesn't quite create the die-hard fan base that a football club needs. A lot of local people that live around here, some of them don't quite like Dale's political views and he makes them quite known and I think it kind of puts people off coming up at the club because they don't come up to watch the football they've always got someone talking about Dale's done this Dale's done that and it can affect it. Furthermore Dale Vince is a big supporter of Extinction Rebellion who have divided public opinion with their own efforts to tackle climate change on the streets with some claiming them to be too radical. First and foremost I'm an environmentalist and I use business as a tool to, uh, to achieve an end. Uh, trying to change the world to bring about sustainability. Fighting the climate crisis is a big part of that. And uh, so to me, XR are not radical. I think uh, we need to do all of the things they're saying and more. Uh, we need purpose-led businesses that take into account the environment and people as well as making money. And you can achieve a great deal when you do that, but when you run a business only for money, you make bad mistakes, uh, bad decisions, uh, which cause problems. So uh, I think Extinction Rebellion are saying all the right things, uh, but I don't think they're extreme. We've got 10 years and we actually have to be radical in the changes that we make. Did you know that underneath Britain we had more coal, more carbon in the form of coal than Saudi, well the same amount as Saudi Arabia did in the form of oil? Enormous amount. So in 1850 we were digging up more coal than the rest of the world put together. So you know we, we have a huge legacy of, um, uh, if you like, involvement and that legacy is still there because you know, carbon dioxide tends to stick around in the atmosphere quite a long time. We can't just simply say, well, we're now not the biggest emitter, therefore, you know, you know we're, we're clean. We have to say, well, no, we have, we have a, a duty of care to use our very high wealth, high skilled economy to show the way and to actually decarbonise the economy. I think we're making it very clear mm. that something really needs to be done mm. and done now. Do you think any of us really want to be on the streets of London for up to a fortnight, mm. risking arrest, mm. but nothing else that has been done beforehand has ever, has ever worked? Mm. If there mm. is to be a planet, a sustainable planet, with good levels of human life, animal life, wildlife, it's vital that this happens. I think we all have the power as individuals, fans of clubs, voters, whatever it is, to lobby the people that we either give our votes to or give our customer or our support to, to lobby them to change what they do, to fight the climate crisis. Man City are just like us, they could, they could uh, pick up this agenda and, and they could achieve a lot. They could probably achieve more than we could because they've got a bigger audience. Uh, you know, if they picked this up and took it seriously, they, they could do a lot. So if I was a a Man City fan or speaking to one, I would say, you know, get on the phone, get on email, get on the internet, you know, and tell them what you want. But enough about the environment, what about the football? 
Dale Vince's innovative approach off the field has gone hand in hand with success on it. In 2017, Forest Green Rovers got promoted to the Football League for the first time in their 130 year history and are now in the race for promotion to League One. We had a decent budget to get out of the National League and now we've got a reasonable one in the league. He recruited an excellent manager in Mark Cooper. Mark likes to play it on the deck, he likes to play it out from the back, passing football. We're, we're, we're renowned for being a really good football team and it's an interesting project. We don't spend beyond our means, we have a reasonable budget, we have young t players that are worth quite a lot of money that mm. we could sell two or three and that would pay for our budget. So. I think across the board, the sustainability is what we try and stick to. Uh, we use um, stats as well, game stats. Uh, we've got heart rate monitors, the GPSs for our players, so we can see how hard they're working. We can we can see if a player drops off. You can you can spot if a player is feeling a little bit under par from his performance on the pitch. So really, it's about. It's about using science, I would say, being at the cutting edge of, uh, of science. You have to have big aspirations. And there's no reason why you can't go where you want to go. You know, it's just because it's a small place. It doesn't, it doesn't mean there's a ceiling on it. No. I think the chairman's openly talked about wanting to be in the championship. The closer you get to that, you have to start paying more money out. But hopefully by then, we have a new stadium, we have increased revenue that, that can deal with it. Indeed, part of this ambition is the plan to build a brand new stadium, Eco Park, which is currently going through an appeal after it was initially rejected by the council. It's where we hope to go to next in order to kind of take the next big steps in our, um, in our plan. We want to get to the championship, which is a couple of leagues higher than where we are now. It's the first in the world to be made entirely of wood. Um, it looks beautiful as well. So we, we really get the chance to start with a blank sheet of paper and uh, show what can be done if you really want to. However, with these plans also moving the club out of the Nailsworth area, they haven't gone down well with everyone. Personally, with the new ground, I'm totally against it myself. Um, I think it's a stupid idea. I think you should keep forest green and forest green, really. Plans look good, the idea is good, but it's just not forest green to me anymore. It would take me a few years to get used to the idea, but I'd never give up the club. But I know a lot of people I go with probably would. Now you've got the lowdown, let's get on with the game. About halfway through the first half, still nil-nil. Forest Green Rovers not necessarily looking like a team that's challenging for the title right now, but they've proved it this season so far. Mansfield pegging them back a little bit at times, but really impressed by the crowd, like really good atmosphere here. And it's really full as well for such a small town. Stadium is practically full. 1-0 Forest Green Rovers. Now Aaron Collins, one of their strikers, scored a fantastic goal. Edge of the box, beautiful goal. Um, on some really nice build-up play as well. You can definitely tell that uh, people come into Forest Green Rovers as well to watch some really nice football on the pitch as well. Manager Mark Cooper seems to have them playing a lot of football on the floor as we've heard from fans before and yeah it just seems really really good good feeling one nil I am your so sadly james isn't with us today so i've got to do a beer review and the burger review but also burgers were sold out so i had to go for a pasty but smells pretty good let's see how it is really really good i mean have another bite that is proper, proper good pasty. Not sure what the exact ingredients in it, but it tastes almost like a balti pie. A little bit spicy, not too spicy. Probably one of the best things I've had at a football ground, if I'm honest. And yeah, it's lived up to the hype because you know, everyone picks up the food here. And yeah, it just goes to show. It doesn't have to be meat to be tasty. As for the beer, fairly local Cotswold lager. So yeah, let's give it a try. Again, really, really nice. Very, very tasty for a lager. Couldn't really recommend it more. You come to Forest Green Rovers, get yourself a pasty, get yourself a beer. Both really nice. Can't really ask for much more. Uh, don't know if to give the pasty an actual score out of five. Let's say four. So it's now 2-1 to Forest Green Rovers. We missed both goals due to being in the bar reviewing the pasty, but you know, wouldn't wouldn't change it for the world because you know it was really good. Now Mansford pulled another goal back. Less than 15 minutes to go now as well, so. Yeah, getting a little bit nervous, but Forest Green's still on top, still playing the better football, so I'm still expecting a winner. Let's hope I'm not disappointed. 
So there we have it, it finished 2-2, obviously not the result that Forest Green Rovers wanted and it got a little bit heated towards the end there. All in all, had an amazing time down here in Nailsworth, spoken to so many great people involved with the club, fans, people from the general area and the lasting impression that I get is that generally people are pushing in the same direction here. Of course, some fans aren't as happy with the way that the club is going as others are, but generally speaking, feels like most people have adapted to the way that the club's changed over the last nine years, are happy with what's going on on the pitch, better football, obviously in the Football League now, and obviously Dale Vince as an owner um, seems to be doing things that a lot of other football owners aren't. He really cares about the community, he really cares about doing something different with a football club um, and running it not only sustainably in an environmental sense but running it sustainably in terms of the football, in terms of the business um, and that's a really refreshing thing to see especially with what we've seen happen to certain clubs in the Football League over the last year. So once again thanks to everyone at Forest Green Rovers for speaking to us, thanks for making us feel so welcome. If you enjoyed this video why not check out the last one we did at Notts County and of course subscribe to Football Daily for more amazing content and see you next time.